I mean, we we don't even have a fight over the spending bills. We just get these bills, these these spending bills, and it's not like one side's bad and the other side's good. Both sides have been doing this. And then we just get it like, like I think what Senator Marshall is it's not just it's not just that bill, but all these things. I mean, I, it happened when Republicans controlled. I mean, we had these omnibus bills that we had no power to make them, never went through a committee or anything. So for each of you, what, so we have 31, almost $32 trillion of debt. What's the limit? So I guess our, our GDP is around 26. So whether it's a dollar amount or whether it's um, um, percentage of GDP, what do you guys think, where do we, I mean, what's the limit? Um, in my experience, at least, is that when we raise raise taxes, we never get the revenues. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, because I want everybody to pay their fair share and figure out how to balance this, but we never get the revenues. We um, we ever we ever say, and the other people say, "Well, if we do this, we're going to save money." We never get the savings either. So, what do you, what do you guys think the limit is? Maybe we just go this way. I don't, sure, I'll, I'll either start. way. Thank you, Senator. Um, Many of us have been calling for this to be a problem for years, and I think one day I'm going to be right. I'm just not sure when that day comes. But I'll tell you now where I think it's going to happen is 2033, because that's when the Social Security Retirement Trust Fund becomes depleted. And that's when if no action is taken by Congress, we're going to have to borrow $300, $350 billion a year to make up the difference in general revenue shortfalls if we don't raise taxes or cut benefits, which I don't think Congress will do at the last minute. That's when you're going to start seeing the bond markets interact and say this borrowing could go on for how much longer, and that's where I think we're going to start hitting our. our so the limit. CB score, CB uh, 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 Congressional Budget Office, I think has this. Uh, if we continue the path we're going down, we would be at what forty-eight something like that trillion really dollars of debt on top of that. What about you? Yeah, I think once once the debt gets up to one hundred and fifty to two hundred percent of GDP, you're really in rare territory with the global economy and with the experience of other countries. I mean, just to put a number on it, imagine we get to 200% of GDP and we have a 5% interest rate. You're paying 10% of GDP in interest. Well, if revenues are usually, what, 17, 18, 19% of GDP, you're in rough shape if the majority of your revenue is just paying interest. So you don't want to get to that point. The bond market may cut you off before you get there, but even if they don't, you don't want to be paying 10% of GDP just in interest. Good morning, friends. I have exciting news to share with you this Thursday. There was a new push for permanent monthly payments for low-income families. President Biden wants to pass new legislation that would renew bigger tax credits. And these monthly checks could be worth as much as $300 and would be automatically sent. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, tomorrow, I will be announcing more winners for the $75 Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, all you have to do, my friends, is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, my friends, of winning the giveaways. President Biden's proposed budget for fiscal 2024 includes a host of proposals aimed at helping American families. That includes one key proposal, the reinstatement of the enhanced child tax credit that temporarily gave qualifying parents up to $3,600 per child for 2021 through the American Rescue Plan. President Biden's plan calls for raising the current maximum child credit from $2,000 per child to $3,600 per child under the age of six, or $3,000 per child ages six and up. The budget also calls for permanently making the child tax credit fully refundable, which means that people would still be eligible even if their tax liability was less than the credit amount. The plan also calls for 12 weeks of paid family and medical leave as well as seven paid sick days for all workers. It also aims to expand access to affordable childcare and free preschool. The budget also calls for expanding Medicaid home and community-based services, which would allow older and disabled individuals to stay at home, providing relief for family caregivers and home care workers. Biden has said of the plan, it is going to help millions of parents go to work 
knowing their children are being taken care of. With this budget, Biden is aiming to cut deficits by almost $3 trillion over 10 years. An analysis by the Tax Foundation found that expanding the child tax credit for three years, creating a monthly payment option, and making it permanently fully refundable would cost more than $429 billion over 10 years. The earned income tax credit expansion for workers without qualifying children will cost about $156 billion. However, other research suggests the government spending may have positive effects. One study shows that for every $1 spent on the child tax credit, it will result in $10 in benefits to society. While some Democratic leaders have championed the policy, other leaders like Senate Republican Mitt Romney have led other efforts for a more streamlined universal child benefit. The proposal is called the Family Security Act 2.0 and it was created by Senators Mitt Romney, Richard Burr, and Steve Daines. Under the Republican Senator's plan, families would receive $350 per month per child up to age five for a total of $4,200 per year. They would receive $250 per month for children ages six through 17 for a total of $3,000 per year. The Republican proposal has several strengths. First, the credit phases in more quickly as a family's income goes up and does so on a per child basis. Second, it also phases in the credit, starting with the first dollar of earnings, rather than starting after the first $2,500 of earnings under the current law. Third, it also eliminates the current $1,500 cap that families can receive as a refund. But overall, some children and families with little to no income may only get a partial child tax credit or no credit at all due to eligibility requirements. In order to receive the full benefits, families would have to earn $10,000 in a previous year. Those who earn less than $10,000 would have their credits reduced proportionally to their earnings. So dear friends, what are your thoughts about child tax credits? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Some Illinois lawmakers are also pushing for a permanent child tax credit. That would mean up to $700 per child for all eligible families. Those who would be eligible for the full amount are joint filers earning less than $75,000 per year and single filers earning less than $50,000 per year. State Representative Marcus Evans Jr., who is sponsoring the bill, would create the Illinois Child Tax Credit and said the legislation is an effort to support low-income working families. He also said it would create more revenue with families having more spending power once they receive the credit. Other lawmakers agree that the money may lessen the economic burden on many families. They could also catch up on their bills or have money for activities with their children. Well, my beautiful and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Thursday morning. Thank you, my dear friends, for being here and for being here every single day. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing several winners tomorrow for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed day.